Former LSU offensive coordinator, I guess technically too, former Notre Dame offensive coordinator, Mike Denbrock is returning to South Bend to be the next offensive coordinator of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Um, Joe, let me start this. I'm just coming off of an lo hour-long show talking about okay. this and from the LSU perspective. This makes me want to play Notre Dame as an LSU fan even more because it, it, it it's building a rivalry, Joe, and no game has ever has been played in this. No. Here's the truth, okay? And I will say this for Notre Dame fans. I'm an LSU dude, okay? If you think that I'm going to come out here and hate on Mike Denbrock, you're a damn fool. Joe, over the last two years, Mike Denbrock has – these are just his averages – He's averaged over 500 yards in the SEC. He averaged over 40 points in the SEC, over 300 passing yards in the SEC, and over uh, 200 rushing yards in the last two years that he's been here. Now, in 2022, the year that they beat Bama and won the West, they were 24th in scoring, and this year we know what happened. They were the number one total offense in the country, number one scoring offense in the country, and their quarterback won the Heisman Trophy. Mike Denbrock is a hell of a good play caller. I know Mike personally. Joe, you saw the conversation that we had or that I had with him. I, I like Mike Denbrock a lot. I was told, very close, reliable source, <laughs> can't get any closer. I, I think this had a lot with him wanting to do to go home. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't fault him. I think Notre Dame got better today, and especially getting a guy like Riley, uh, Riley Leonard, you've gotten better. I'm going to save one part of this because I don't want us to start this segment off yelling, but I do think that there's one thing that nobody is accounting for in all of this of him moving from LSU to Notre Dame. But what are your thoughts, my man? And I will admit, Notre Dame fans were in my DMs. Luke said he was never going to come here. All right, you're right. I was wrong on that. Well, I, mo most Notre Dame people did not think that he was going to come here. I mean, the, I the Notre Dame. Because, Joe, he just turned down Texas A&M, and A&M was going to make him the highest-paid corner yeah. in the country. And LSU matched both teams. I was told from an LSU source today, LSU matched both. They matched what A&M offered. They matched what uh, uh, Notre Dame offered. So, with that being said alone, uh, he just wanted to go home or closer to home. I, so to, to add into that, we have a, a Notre Dame show on the network that I produce and CJ Procise, former great Notre Dame running back was a third round pick. He talked about on the show how he had such a great, he has such a great relationship with Mike Denbrock. And as much as it would be great for him to come back to Notre Dame, he also believed that he didn't think it was remotely possible. So most people in the Notre Dame community did not think that this was going to happen. I didn't think that this was going to happen until I got a phone call. Uh, that woke me up this morning from somebody on the East Coast that 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 reached out to me about this. And then I heard it from a couple different spots. And then I called you to kind of talk about this whole thing. Plain and simple, Blake, I'm trying to be a little cordial about this, but I got, I'm taking my one shot here. Oh, dude, I told I, you not to look, be cordial. I think it's hilarious that the whole offseason and the whole season that you said that Notre Dame will never get to where they need to be unless they're willing to spend the money. And unless they're willing to go after and go get a real offensive did you coordinator, not say that's the not your thing. I did. I'm I'm just saying specifically with what was said on this show that we talked so much, and I agreed with you that they needed to spend the money and they needed to get a real offensive coordinator that wasn't Jared Parker. And it just so happened the guy that we never considered until the final hour, until Kirby Moore turned us down and got an extension, was the offensive coordinator at LSU that was Brian Kelly's close personal friend. It, the whole thing is hilarious. That's but all I, I'm just here, throwing in there. I'm excited, but situationally, the whole thing is freaking hilarious. But, Joe, we talked about this last week. We talked about it on our show. Go watch the clip if you hadn't seen it. Yeah, yeah. We talked about, like, go out. What did I say? My exact words were, Joe, I like my offense like I like my women's legs. Spread. That's exactly what Mike – did you do you not remember me saying that? I do remember you saying okay. that. It was really unhinged. They get, <laughs> went and got that with Mike Denbrock. They paid the money to go get him. Good on them. No, they did exactly. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. From a Notre Dame perspective, they did exactly what I told them. Like, hey, if I'm a Notre Dame fan, let's keep it real. It, they did exactly what they needed to do. I, I mean, why would I sugarcoat that? What right. would you think I'd say? Right. No, I know. I get what you're saying. I'm just just pointing out 
not the irony of your statement, just the general irony of the criticism that has been from the non Notre Dame fan public has said about Notre Dame. So wait, here are you my- saying that Marcus Freeman and the Notre Dame uh, base did this despite me? No, that's not what I'm saying. That's exactly what it sounds like you're saying. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> I'm just merely I'm just merely pointing out that a large large amount of the LSU fan base was saying that Notre Dame will never get where they need to be unless they spend the money. And here they are this whole off season. They've spent the money. That's my biggest takeaway from all this. And I said it the minute that they went after Riley Leonard, the minute that they went after some of the top receivers that were in the portal, some of the top recruits, they got their first five-star receiver since Michael Floyd. They got all these really talented linebackers and defensive ends that they added in this recruiting class. Yes. LSU finished ahead of them. Notre Dame still had a phenomenal recruiting hall. This is the direction that they needed to go in. This is exactly what Marcus Freeman needed to do. What held them back over the past two years is him being a young head coach surrounded by young coordinators outside of Al Golden, specifically the two offensive coordinators that were not going to situationally help him when the shit was hitting the fan. And now he does not have to have everything on his shoulders. He's got Mike Denbrock, who's been around for uh, so long in college football. Are and you Al Golden, my buddy Mike Old, well, he's in his late sixties, seventies, whatever it is. He's not in his seventies. Yeah, he is he's Mike Denbrock's old? He's uh, seventy. Uh, I'm gonna check that in a second. All right. And he's got Al Golden, who's a former head, head coach. coach at multiple right. multiple places. I was out on Marcus Freeman for a part of time. I'm stupidly gonna get back in, but this is exactly what they needed to do. If they weren't going to get Kirby Moore and if he was going to leave, you had to make a big splash. And he put his nuts on the table. He said to the new president, if you guys want me to succeed, let me spend the money. I'm not promoting another assistant. We need to go and get somebody. And this is the biggest person you could have gotten. He was the top of everybody's wish list for multiple teams across the country. And this is what they needed to do. I agree with all of that. I I, I can't argue that. I, I mean, they did, and, and good on them, Joe. If they want to take – they're doing what Mar- for Marcus Freeman what it felt like they wouldn't do for Brian Kelly. A- a- am I wrong in saying that they're doing for Marcus Freeman what they did not do for Brian Kelly? Yeah. No, I, I mean, this is something that I've said multiple times, that there's now more leniency with admissions, there's more leniency with transfers, and they're spending more money on assistance. You're absolutely right. Let me just say this. I love Mike to death. But I know you got Riley Leonard. I know you got a good offensive line, good running back core. Mike's offense was predicated in the success at LSU for obviously a couple of reasons. But, and I'm not, and look, when I say what I'm about to say, okay, this is not discrediting the way and what the plays that I thought. And the scheme that I thought that Mike Denbrock called. I, I loved it. I thought he did a fantastic job. But he had the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback the last two seasons. Okay. Mm-hmm. The caliber of dude that was progressing that, quite honestly, from an LSU's perspective, a dude that had and mirrored Joe Burrow-like see, regular season statistics. And he has potentially two first-round wide receivers. He has a potentially second well, a guy that came from Notre Dame, ironically enough, and three guys along LSU's offensive line that are NFL dudes right now. Okay? What he had to play with at LSU is going to be different than what he has to play with at Notre Dame. And you can get mad at that. But are, are you a 1,000% sure – that you have dudes like Brian Thomas Jr. and Malik Neighbors on that team. You've said to me on this show, and you've pointed out to me on this show, that Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. weren't even the most highly recruited kids in that receiver room. But, but hold on. Before you go forward, that's not that's not just a, 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 a one-time thing for LSU. There was a guy like Justin Jefferson who was a two-star – there is, there are, the LSU has had multitudes of those. You know who else had a couple of them? Who? Joe Brady. Okay. You know who but else had a couple of them? Jimbo Fisher. I you understand. Know who else had a couple of them? Les Miles. 
I so, understand what you're trying to get at that that this is a history of LSU of developing lower quality receivers, but well, they're, they're just not you know two four. Sorry, low, low, lower rated receivers, lower quality right. is the wrong. It, it's a negative term. Notre Dame has a room full of f- four stars. The, like the, as much as it seems like they haven't recruited the position, they have a lot of four stars, and they're bringing in a five star kid this year. They have bodies. And Do they now have, have a coach who knows that schema. Brian Thomas, right now, is my How, question. But two years ago, did you think that Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors were going to be what they were? So glad you asked. I maybe Malik uh, Neighbors, but you wait, wait, you said to me on the show when I brought up how Jane Daniels was throwing to NFL wide receivers when I was trying to claim when I was trying to push back on the whole Heisman conversation. I remember distinctly you had the argument nobody knew who Brian Thomas Jr. was before this season it doesn't matter what they knew about him in the beginning of the season look where he's at right now what but why can't why can't Notre Dame has the guy it's not like they're pulling from two LSU stars this is an record. army LSU has a track record of, of dudes from the state of Louisiana become Joe who are the two best it's receivers not correlative there's no correlation for that that's just guys happen to be from the region that end up being good football players Joe, if I told you that a specific number of quarterbacks are coming from the same region every year and winning Heisman's and becoming great NFL quarterbacks what would you say no, okay yeah I would say that the, a lot of those guys okay. come from that region so you but, have to do it the same th- oh you know what it's called it's called California but Notre Dame also produced guys that were three stars. Like name, Kyron a, name a good Cut. wide receiver in the league that Notre Dame has right now. Will Fuller, before he got hurt, was a great NFL wide receiver. And right Kyron name. Williams was a three-star I running back. Right they take they and Will Fuller, three stars all of the time. And, and Will Fuller can't – Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson take bigger shits than Will Fuller. I, I, I look, I get that, and I understand that there's pride in the talent that comes from the state of Louisiana and from that so area. They did it but twice in the but, last five years, you've uh, never even remotely come close to a offense that LSU has fielded in nineteen, and what they did this year. Not even you went to the college football goals. playoff with Ian Book, with Ian Book and Chase Claypool, who sucks in the NFL. Joe, we did that with Joe, Brian Kelly. Joe, we won a fucking national title with Les Miles and Ed Orgeron's dumbass. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't I don't know what you're talking about. I think it's ridiculous to assume that Denrock's going to show up and that he can't develop the talent. I didn't I, say that. I didn't that's say what you're that. You're implying. No, that's, that's not what you're what implying. I'm, hold oh. on. Hold on. That's not what I'm implying. What I'm applying did you just like completely unplugged everything? I just knocked my mic off of there you did. continue. Okay. Go ahead. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is to assume that it will be the same at LSU this go around. Hold on, God damn it. <sighs> like it is at Notre Dame when you – Joe, he's got the fucking Heisman Trophy winner. Yes, I don't think that that's going to happen. To assume that they're immediately going to okay, go to what exactly what happened. About? I'm arguing that there's still going to be a million light years. Well, okay, wait, here, here's, the, here's the very important aspect of this. Very important aspect of this. Notre Dame finished – Nine and three in the regular season. So did LSU. Their three losses in their worst games came the result of shitty, piss poor offense. They would have beaten Ohio State had their offense had any any competence. They would have beaten Clemson for the same deal, and they would have beaten Louisville for the same deal. And LSU lost to the SEC wait, wait, champion. We're not, the we're not, we're, champion we're not talking about. Wait, 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 I'm not comparing the two of them. I'm not comparing the two of them. I'm not talking about LSU. My point is, is that Notre Dame's offense was so bad, and their defense was so good. It was so freaking good that as long as this offense gets seventy percent better, it is good enough to take a huge step forward to be in that top five conversation. Where did 70% They've, come from? I'm just throwing a number out there. <laughs> I also implore anybody to go look at Notre Dame's 2024 schedule. We looked up Syracuse's schedule. Notre Dame has one hard game, and that's Florida State. If you want to count USC too, you can, but I don't. Notre Dame with Denbrock as their offensive coordinator and Riley Leonard – a top 50 caliber NFL draft quarterback. Debate me if you idiots in the comments think I'm wrong. I'm fucking right on that. That team is good enough to go at least 11 and one. 
Yeah, because you don't play nobody, and you never do. We can win a playoff game with Mike Dembrek calling the plays and everything that we just brought in in the play. I don't, I don't doubt that. Here's another thing. Your offense sucks so bad, right? Yeah. You were eighth in the country in scoring offense. You score, you average 39 points a game. How many yards do we rack up against? Pitt? I don't give a shit. P yards, you told me three we weeks put, ago. We put on, 60 points on Pitt and you 50 on me, Navy. You told me that you put, it, it doesn't matter how many yards you put up. It only matters when you score. What? You told me that yards don't matter when you put up a lot of points. You're putting up, you're, you're top 10 in the country in scoring offense. And by Mike, the and, and by the way, by wait, the way, wait, wait, wait. Okay, but Penn State also did that shit where the 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 we, mediocre teams that they played on their schedule they looked fantastic, and then the games that they showed up that they needed to play competent offense, it was non-existent. It was that polar opposite. I don't give a shit how you play against Navy, and yeah, I bought in against Navy stupidly. I don't care how you played against Central Michigan or Pitt or any of those teams. It matters how you play against Ohio State and how you play against Clemson. And you, how, how you play against Florida State next year. You know what I think is funny? When Mike Denbrock was hired at LSU, y'all Notre Dame fans said he was a joke. I mean, now, I'm not one of those people. Now, now, I know you're not, but I think it's funny that you're praising that you wanted him back. Look, I think Mike's a good – I think Mike's a great – like I've said, I think he's a great play caller. I, I, I don't hate Mike – I love Mike Denbrock. I think Mike Denbrock would tell you he ain't got – he ain't got – he ain't going to have the weapons – like he did at LSU. And I, I, I disagree with that. I, he, he, he's not going to. I, I mean, and Joe, and here's another thing, too. Last thing. Okay. You said, oh, well, we have all these four stars. Well, just throwing this out there. LSU's got four, five, four former five-star wide receivers in their, in their room, in their wide receiver room. They have four five-star offensive linemen in their O-line room. You're, you're, one thing I will promise you, to my core, offensively, they're dominating recruiting. It's defensively that Brian Kelly is struggling. Brian Kelly is getting his ass whipped in some areas. Here, here's the truth. He's getting his ass whipped along the defensive line. Now, you want to hear a crazy stat? Okay. okay. If Brian Kelly would have gotten three defensive interior defensive linemen, just three, even three stars, Okay, Joe, they would have been a top three class in this year's in this year's ranking. Three. Now, I think they're going to do some things in the portal. What I don't think people realize, and if you're going to put all bias aside, Joe, they got five or seven five star dudes on this offense that Denbrock had to play with. It's it, it, it is different when you're talking about. The level of recruiting on that on that side of the ball, defensively, you're they're kicking LSU's ass. I, I mean, I'm not gonna. <laughs> you're not gonna get me in saying that they're not. They are. They're flip flopped. You're dominating defense. Oh, we got a five star receiver, Joe. We got 77 of them. We got another one that was just uh, born. Okay. They're falling off on trees in this motherfucker. I I I I understand that what you're trying to to. You do. might want to bleep out the motherfucker, but. Hey, when we don't we don't believe believe about curse words. I understand what you're trying to do. At the end of the day, Notre Dame is in a far far better situation. I mean, Agreed. even if Jared, if even if Jared Parker was calling the plays, their offense could have realistically improved. But the difference now is that it has more talent and it has one of the best offensive play callers in the country calling the plays. That's the that's the whole deal here. That's the big takeaway. They don't need to be LSU to win playoff games and to get to the national championship, in my opinion. I don't think that they need they they don't need Malik Neighbors or Jaden Daniels. Yes, I jokingly tweeted Riley Leonard Heisman Trophy uh, season like incoming. In the ass. I thought that that was funny. Some people did not. A lot of people. Did I not. mean, you were doing a lot it of people were me. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent. 
off your first deposit. That is a 50% welcome bonus. Bet online where the game starts.